Oscar Bevis, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by the last here at the Matrim Gym in the middle of nowhere. It's moved. Do you was you at the old gym? Was you at the old you did go there or you didn't or No, no, no. Uh, this is this is the first time I've been to this gym. So they did move um not too sure how long ago, maybe about a year ago, I think it is, but I think it used to be about fifteen minutes up the road. So back where we do we do the triangle run. Actually we have like a sprint triangle circuit which is around the corner of the old gym, so I was gonna say to you. I found that hard to find. This one is proper middle of nowhere stuff, but um, it is a lovely gym. So, anyway, Dempsey McKean, happy New Year! Um, last saw you and spoke to you after uh, your win in New Hampshire on the Andre Quigley card, um, and we spoke before that as well about you being over here and working with Tony. Now you're in Essex. You're you're an Essex boy now. Um, how's it all going? Yeah, I wouldn't wouldn't quite label me as an Essex boy, uh, not yet anyway. So, but I'm loving it. You know, the move's been really beneficial. You know, working with Tony, getting a lot of quality time under him. Obviously, before I fought in America, I only spent the two weeks with him. Now that I've been based over here a bit more, and um, after the last break, you know, I've spent about almost two months with him as well, and it's really starting to show. And I just spoke to you a little bit off camera as well, and. You would have been doing sparring and, and whatnot. And one of the spars you said you had recently is Daniel Dubois, which uh, obviously a big name over here. So just want to tell us a little bit about that because uh, yeah, I think that would be, I imagine it was an interesting one. Yeah, it's good. Um, I sparred him, I sparred him a couple of times now. I've got him tomorrow and then Thursday. So I think he's pretty much going to be a main sparring partner for this camp, at least a couple of times a week. And then sparring another guy from Ben Davidson Gym, uh, Jamie TKV as well. So I uh, get some plenty of good rounds in, you know, a lot more sparring than I was getting back home, a lot more variety and, and um, you know, a lot of higher quality sparring partners here too. So it's great. And just in terms of the boys in the gym, obviously Connor's in and now Blair and his music ready to, uh, ready to train. Felix, John, um, it's a level of fighters where every single one is sort of looking to achieve something. You've got Felix who's aiming for the European title. John's about to go into a fight with Danny Jacobs. Connor's one of the hottest names in boxing at the moment. Everyone in the gym is kind of at such a high level. Definitely. And then you've got Joe Cordina as well. You know, he's probably on the fringe of a world title fight in the next couple of fights too. So, you know, to be able to train with these guys day in and day out and... Um, you know, it's good because I rise to the occasion. You know, I train hard. I've always been a hard trainer, um, you know, and to be around world-rated guys on the fringe of world title fights as well, like, it's really, it's, it's a blessing, so. And obviously with a trainer like Tony Sims as well in my corner, so, you know, I'm really excited for the future. Let's talk about the future. I said, um, spoke to you after the win in New Hampshire. Good win on your, uh, on your matchroom debut. And I can imagine looking to sort of kick on this year and make... 2022, the year of the year people find out maybe in this country as well, especially now you're based here about about Dempsey McKee. Yeah, definitely. So I've got my next fight coming up on the 27th of February at the London O2 Arena. So uh, really looking forward to that. You know, it's going to be my British debut. Obviously, had my US debut uh, for Matchroom a couple of months ago. So yeah, really excited to make my um, British debut and, and then see where that takes me to. What sort of plan have you got laid out of what you want to achieve? Let's say theoretically, I come here this time next year what sort of stuff do we want to be reflecting on from from 2022 uh, i'll be looking looking back at some big fights some good hard tests and some good names on my resume as well you know so i got to get past my next opponent um and then i think we're going to be looking at uh, quite a big name obviously i can't disclose that but there's a couple of names that have been getting thrown around so um you know i'm really looking forward to the test and my team believes in me and, and that's the main thing considering the heavyweights we've got in this country and we've sort of got that mix at the moment of Will Fury fight Joshua or Usyk and then White and whatnot. Do you feel like, you talk about this big name, do you feel like to be kind of respected almost over here, you have to go and fight one of them big names? You know, you can churn out a few of these fights to get ready, but to ultimately be respected by the UK boxing fans, you have to jump in with someone that people go, yeah, that's a tough fight. 100%, you, you got to prove yourself, you know. There's no point really fighting these kind of, you know, these, these B-class fighters or the middle type of fights, you know. You need to get that big name on your resume or another possible world-ranked opponent or another contender. So um, until you do take out one of those names in a good fashion, you know, I think then they're going to put some respect on your name and then you're going to get that respect that you do deserve, so. Well, we mentioned Joseph Parker after your fight. I said to you I was going to make sure that I kept my promise of asking you to call <laughs> someone out. Yeah. Um, you said Joseph Parker and, <clears throat> pardon me, I suppose because of the Australia-New Zealand, is it Trans-Tasman? Yeah, trans 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 yeah. It's just kind of a fight that makes sense from a marketing point mm -hmm. of view. Um, he had his win, since your win over um, Derek Chisora. Just your thoughts on that performance? 
he looked good you know like joe parker always does look good he always puts on a pretty pretty good clinic and um a good display you know he's fast he's got the good boxing technique you know moves well fast hands so um yeah i think he always he always performs well so i think that would be a good fight we're both kind of similar styles we like to box a bit more we've both got fast hands move around well um so that is obviously a fight i would, I would like in the future as well that's australia versus new zealand you know what what kind of uh person wouldn't want to see that especially out in trans tasman way you know aussies and new zealand's really get behind that and especially if matchroom were to have a card out in australia well when they do you know that, that'd make for a great fight on it so we were just talking before and i said a minute ago about that group of fighters if you're looking to become world heavyweight champion the likelihood is it's not going to be in the next couple of years unless you're in that group there's people tied up there's fights that you're expecting to be made with fights sort of agreed in the distance um so for someone like yourself and joseph parker is there any reason why it can't happen like there's no sort of stumbling point really is there why this can't happen this year yeah i think that's why joe kind of knows that as well i think he knows you know he's still probably a couple of years off from uh getting a world title fight even though he is quite highly highly rated so i think these are the fights that we're going to be looking to make you know in the meantime you know unfortunately dylan white's been getting shafted all over the place as well you know he's been waiting years and years and years and then there's talks about step aside money and and fights to make Usyk and fury happen as well so what's going to happen with him there and so it's it's in shambles at the moment you know but it's it's a good opportunity for myself and a good time for myself to kind of rise up to the top of those rankings you know i'm still a couple of years away theoretically to uh getting quite highly rated you know in the top three you know there's still a few fights away a few big names a few big fights away from cracking to the top there and, and possibly chasing the title shot how would you feel if you was dealing white? Because you use the word shafted, and I think that's a pretty fair assessment of what has happened over the last few years. Um, it got to the point where it was like the, everyone was going on about the a thousand days or whatever mm. they had been WBC mandatory. Um, then this whole thing about the person with Fury, and now we're seeing Fury might fight Usyk. So mm. just if you were dealing white, just sort of how do you think he's feeling sitting and waiting? Because even these fights he's having in between, they are miles on the clock that they're putting on him because he doesn't have easy fights. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's always in wars as well, but um. If I was him, man, I'd be I'd be pretty pretty annoyed and pretty pissed off. That's for sure. So, uh, you know, he's a good bloke. He's been waiting patiently. He's done everything. He's fought everyone that's been put in front of him. So, um, yeah, it's sad to see, you know. And it's, that's boxing as well, isn't it? It's, it's politics and it's business. When there's money involved on that kind of caliber, you know, anything can happen. So, it is unfortunate to see, but. You know, if he's sparring at the moment, I'd probably hate to be his sparring partner as well. I was his sparring partner for about a month in, in Portugal too, so he spars very hard, but in a time like this, I reckon he's trying to take someone's head off. So, Yeah, I was going to say, I don't envy you whoever his yeah. sparring partner is right now. Um, and in terms of Andy Joshua and this step aside money, I know the Telegraph just literally broke a story about half an hour ago saying it's likely he will take a 15 million step aside money. Um, financially, quite nice. But um, just in, in terms of the mentality, because you'll have people say, right Joshua kind of needed to go away work on things might get new people around him but also as a heavyweight that mentality that people might go hold on is he scared to jump straight back in so I don't know where do you think Joshua would be at mentally right now because you've been offered something quite lucrative but obviously we know he would want them belts back definitely but I think it's it's, it's a hard one isn't it until you're in that position and someone's waving a 15 million dollar check in front of your face you know I think it's a hard one to say but it's like how bad do you want those titles and it is a hard one, you know, and does he get he gets more time away to, to train and prep for that fight and I heard possibly he gets the first shot as well. If he has a step aside, he gets a shot at all the titles, you know. There's there's many different variations and possibilities you've got to think about and sit down with your team and think what is the best option for yourself. So <clears throat> but yeah, when they're when they're throwing that much money in front of you, it is a hard decision to make. So I'm just ending this with like a, a theoretical question. Say we've got that mix of the four, Joshua, Fury, Usyk and Dillian White. And then at the end of the year, only one stands and they get to fight you. If you could choose one, perhaps not who you think it will be, if you could choose one that you personally would like to fight for any reason, be it you like them as a fighter or it's a fight that appeals to you, who would you pick if you could fight one of them? I'll probably say Fury, you know, he's probably the bigger name out of the mix there. You know, so take out the, the biggest, you know, he's probably the biggest reps, reps at the moment. Um, you know, he's got a good record, big name, um, stylistically as well. He's another big guy. And I, I think that's a good fight. You know, Otto Willeen gave him a tough fight. You know, it was the, the first South where he's fought in a long time. I consider myself a lot better and more technical than Otto. So I think I can give him a tough fight and come away with the win. There's my headline, Dempsey McKean calls up Tyson Fury. Yeah. <laughs> um, Dempsey, pleasure. Thanks for no. giving me some of your time today. And yeah, look forward to seeing you on the uh, on the Acoli bill and uh, sort of in the build up on the fight week. Lovely. Cheers, mate. Thank you.